Well, I'm actually doing some more traveling. Uh, this actually wasn't my intended stop, but I'm stopping here for one night. Uh, the reason is something unexpected happened on my way to the East Coast, which was the road that I would normally take to get to the East Coast had a rock slide, which uh, you'll see video of as I'm speaking, which actually meant that there was a delay of more than an hour before they cleaned it, and then there was traffic control. So I thought, I don't really want to ride on the East Coast when it's dark, when there's a lot of trucks. So I decided to stop in Yilan again, which is actually one of the places that I seem to uh, come to the most when I want some time off. Uh, the place I'm staying at is a hot spring. I'll show you the room in a moment. It's actually not bad. I found it like very last minute and it's only about, um, 1,200 dollars a night. So it's actually not bad, but I want to go to the uh, lobby for a moment because there's something that I do want to, uh, discuss because this is something that came up last weekend when I was riding around. And something that kind of slightly annoys me is when you have riders who criticize new riders for either going too slow or doing things that maybe experienced riders like myself and you and others would just not do. The thing is though, Everybody has a period of non-experience that is extremely, extremely normal. So I think we should cut them a little bit slack. Now, the thing about going slow, um, put it this way, even myself, if there's a bike that I have never ridden before, I always ride that bike like I'm riding a bike for the very first time. So recently I just bought a Ducati, which I mentioned in one of the short videos. I'd wanted to get a Ducati for some time. Now I have ridden it a little bit, but every bike feels different. Some people are very irresponsible. They just jump on every bike and drive like a, a maniac, which of course you go ahead and do it. But I like to get familiar with things first. Um, recently on the, uh, on a group that I belong to, we were comparing ourselves, like we were saying the, the question was, if you had to compare yourself to the way you ride or the way you drive with a character or an individual, who would that be? Um, <laughs> surprisingly, I, well, I'm actually not surprisingly because I have to admit, I can be a little bit like that sometimes because I am very cautious, but, um, Everybody's saying, oh, Keith, you're like, you're like Captain Slow. You're like James May, the way you drive, right? I, I suppose I am, but you know, what is, what is it that James says? Uh, the one, uh, those who leave last will always get there first. Um, but no, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, okay. That sounds maybe like I'm, I drive like a slow poke. No, I don't. There are times, of course, I, I do like drive, ride like a maniac, but I'm always very sort of cautious with everything. Uh, it's just that the way, that was the way that I was brought up when I first started riding. I think the first, the first bike I had was a monkey bike, which I'd mentioned before. And from the very start that I had that bike, I was always told, you know, you're riding a motorcycle. You have nothing around you. Be as safe as you can. Well, as you can, as much as you can on a motorbike. So new riders out there who, for example, maybe for a few years were just riding like a 125cc or a 150cc or 200cc, when they go to something larger, like 500 or 1,000cc, you have to, you know, cut them a little bit slack. Cut them a little bit slack until they actually get used to it. Um, I think that's just kind of like the, the normal thing to do, you know. Because it is, it is kind of annoying when you have somebody, let's say that is... Um, riding a large capacity bike for the very first time and other people are, you know, criticizing them. Of course, sorry, I have noise. Um, one of the things I think that, that 
people who are new writers should possibly do is that if you do see people behind you that are maybe losing their patience because perhaps you're you just got your license and you got a bike that you're not really familiar with is let them pass that is always the uh you know the best thing to do just let them pass but you know if you if you see a new writer the one of the best things of course you could do and i i try to do it when i can and that is you know talk to them uh if you have a camera on your bike, say, hey, you know, you just need something that sounds a little bit right. You need to, you know, try, try to boost their confidence. Something, of course, that a lot of new writers will lack at the beginning, of course, is confidence in the bike. Um, and I think we have to keep positive and not, not you know, criticize new writers like that. Um, the only new writers that I will criticize are ones that feel that they know everything the minute they get on the bike, and then, of course, will eventually end up in an accident. Uh, I've seen a number of accidents like that happen where they just got their license for two weeks and they decide to ride like a maniac, and, uh, well, they go off the road. You know, so I think it's better to be a little bit cautious than to ride like a maniac, especially at the beginning. So give advice, you know. Um, I think it's always welcome. I mean, when I first started riding, when I was like, uh, you know, 13, but when I, when I got to larger capacity bikes, uh, when I was like 16, I was riding up 200 CC. Um, some older riders were giving me advice, you know, to try to boost your, my confidence, which I think everybody has to go through. Um, so yeah, take it easy on them. Don't be too critical. Anyway. Um, so where am I staying? Well, let me do a, uh, time lapse of the lobby area and then I'll go and show you the room. Not, not bad actually. The lighting is a little bit low only because like I said a moment ago the staff have uh, the lobby have uh, buggered off for the evening. So let's take a look at that and um, then I'll go show you the room. surprised at uh, how inexpensive this place is. Um, kind of found it by accident because like I said I didn't really feel like because I was held up on, on the road coming in because of the rock slide I didn't feel like taking the East Coast Road traveling south with all the trucks at night. It's a little bit, it's, it can be a little bit dangerous actually, to be perfectly honest. So here we go. Come on, lift. You know, Yilan is a, a city that I have been to, wow, I'm, should I call it a city? Place, I think is a more appropriate name, that I've been to many, many times. It's a place that I, like I mentioned in previous videos that I like to come to on the weekend. Um, because it's not too far from Taipei, and there's actually quite a bit to do here. Uh, it's about maybe, well, the way that I go, I usually take the long way, so it's about three hours, but the long way is actually quite nicer. So here we go into the hallway, and I'm in room, go, 405. There we go. Okay, so... Here it is. It's not that big. Move all my stuff from earlier. It's not that big, but a decent sized bed. TV with almost like 500 channels. Now, the reason I chose this one because it's not a regular hotel. This one is actually a hot spring. So, if you go to the bathroom, you'll see. Yeah, it is a hot spring. I'm going to use it later. Um, and then try to plan out what I want to do tomorrow. Actually, I found something quite interesting, and the place that I'm thinking to go visit, actually, uh, I think anybody who rides a lot will complain about two types of vehicles on the road. Buses, who just think they own the road, and, of course, taxis. And I discovered something a while ago, and I just, I, I've passed by it a number of times, but I thought tomorrow would be actually a good day to go and visit it, it is a taxi museum. 
Yes, a taxi museum uh, featuring all kinds of taxis from all around the world. So let me go and get the hot spring tub ready. I'm not going to bring you in there and then get to bed a little bit early because I want to head out um, not too late. So I'll see you in 24 hours from now.